Good morning. Welcome to Morning Java, brought to you by Getgo Cafe and Market, where you can buy the Pilgrim. Now, if you haven't heard what the Pilgrim is, it's a sandwich with turkey, gravy. Thanksgiving on a bun, basically. Cheese and cranberry sauce. I have a Josh Bell bobblehead, and I have Lance Lysowski in the studio, which means we're going to talk about baseball. Oh, but guess what? Yeah, the, let's put, let's put, let's let's put, put Lorenzo that. Kane up front here because the Brewers are actually still participating in events. Lance, what a franchise. Yeah, it's been fun to watch that team kind of progress through the season because when they came into the year, yeah, they got Christian Yelich, they got Lorenzo Kane in the offseason, but everybody was talking about what this team doesn't have. Starting pitching, a catcher, and even a shortstop. And you know what? They have they those got things. Pro- they got yeah. production from them. They got Eric Kratz and yeah. the Yankees for nothing. He's been good. Their Eric Kratz been- wasn't good when he was in yeah. Pittsburgh and was the third string guy. Um, it's funny that the, the Brewers have gotten the way they have through trades and free agency. And I think one thing that gets lost in Pittsburgh is that the Pirates' playoff teams from 2013 to 2015 built so were far. built on trades and free agency. It's just that there was this misconception out there that they were doing it through drafting and developing. There are different ways to go about it. You can yep. draft and develop and then trade those players away. Or and the if Brewers you don't have develop, done that. Yeah, yep. or if you don't develop them all the way, you trade them when their value is high, something the Pirates didn't necessarily do with somebody like Tyler Glass now. Right, right. So th- this team did it the right way. They spent money when they had to. Christian Yelich, which is an incredible trade they made. Lorenzo Cain got $80 million, and now... This team, they're going to give what I think they're going to be in the World Series. I think they're going to be in the World Series as well. And you know what else I think, Lance? I think they're going to be the first team in World Series history to have been swept in a five-game series at PNC Park and still (laughs) win a championship. That did happen. It's going to be incredible. It looked like that ruined their season, meaning Milwaukee's. Do you remember that? They were just worn down. I think they played like 25 games in 25. It was just ridiculous running games. The Pirates smoked them. They did. They did. You know... The Brewers even have better bobbleheads. This actually looks like Lorenzo Cain. They have real grains of dirt. That's a great bobblehead. It really is nice. Josh Bell does not look like this. It's a bad bobblehead. Other than the 55 (laughs) on his back, there's not a whole lot of resemblance. Uh, Can the Pirates become that team next year? Next year, no. Why? Too many holes. They're not going to spend money in free agency. They might spend a little bit. Maybe you get that fourth outfielder. Well, the, you think they'll spend more in free agency this year than they did last year? I'm being devil's advocate to the uh, fact that we both know they're not going to spend money because they have guys like Jordan Luplo who they want to give playing time to. This cost more than what the Pirates spent in As free much agency. as Pablo Reyes was a great story in September, he's going to be one of those reasons why they say, well, we're not going to spend money because we have guys like Pablo Reyes, and Jordan, Jordan Luplo, Luplo, and Max and, Moroff, I mean, and Kevin. Made it clear. Neil Huntington made it clear they're not even going to go after a middle reliever because they've got never outkiss. They've Michael got Feliz. never get an outkiss. And... <laughs> they've got guys who didn't perform in the major leagues, but they're going to roll them back out there for next year. Uh, that's just not the way you approach things. My own devil's advocate for you. Let me hear it. The you just said yourself in yeah. the first segment that the Brewers got starting pitching that they didn't expect that they'd have. Uh, I would argue the same happened for the Pirates, and I'm sure you wouldn't dispute that based on many stories that you've written on this subject. Uh, With a rotation of Tyone, Musgrove, Musgrove, Trevor Williams, Trevor Williams, Chris Archer, Ivan Nova, and Chris Archer, I think you're looking at arguably the most solid rotation they've had since the playoff teams. Absolutely. Okay? Yeah, n- not even no, arguably. Yeah, Absolutely. It, the bullpen's okay. the same, too. When you when you look at the back end with, back end. with Vasquez, Kella, Crick, now, and well, why Santana's can't gone to Richard team, Rodriguez. Why can't that team compete? There's no offense. And Gregory Polanco could be out till mid-June. I just don't see where they're going to get the production because they, they are banking on this gentleman but to they have should a heck bank of a on season. Him. I mean, I, I, look, nobody rides the front office harder than I do, Lance, but he should have had a better year, and he I'm not have. telling you anything I didn't tell and he him. Know, and he knows he should have. Right. Yeah. He knows it. He's putting it on himself. But, you're he, not only, but he should. You're not only banking on him. You're banking on that middle infield that, what, might have Kevin Newman? I like Adam See, Frazier, that's where but... And then you have Colin Moran at third base. They're going to try to bring back Jung Ho Gung, but which Jung Ho Gung is it going to be? Is it yeah. the, the one I saw in Bradenton back in June, or is it the one that was playing extremely well for them for those well, two seasons? The, the one positive for that young man is that there will be a new set of hitting coaches in and a new set of eyes. Whether or not Jeff Branson and 
Uh, and Jeff Lowe's say we're the problem. You don't know, but you do know that what was there wasn't working. We talked about whether this team's going to make a move in the offseason. So why wouldn't why they? Why wouldn't they, Lance? Well, they're See, not going to spend. This is the part where these conversations about this well, franchise yeah, it, just gets so. It, like, it, it just, just ends you, right just, there. You're in quicksand right after that. Why you, wouldn't they? You just know that the mo the model in which they work is they're going to look internally to fill almost any spot. But that's even a though problem. there's nothing there, there's when, that's a problem when you don't have anything there. And as much as Jordan Luplo and Pablo Reyes and Jose Osuna have done things here and there that in makes September. you think, yeah, maybe they can you know actually be major leaguers. Let's just look back to 2017 when they had all those young guys on the bench. How did that work out? When you had Gipping you know, Gope, it just they say stuff like this and they think. And I've heard this about them a lot uh, from people who are inside the front office. They say things, and they think that because they say them, they are true. And the, uh, case in point here, it was no more than months ago, it was in this calendar year that Neil Huntington unapolog unapologetically stated that had Josh Harrison gone down, that there was not a problem because they had Max Moroff to play second base. And Max Moroff was not even brought up in September because they're done. Max Moroff is not good no. at baseball. And that's how they think. So they just go, well, look here. They have a, in their offices, there's a, they're the, like their inside baseball offices, this giant dry erase board that's this permanent depth organizational chart. depth chart. Yeah. And just because the next name is on there doesn't mean that the next name is any good. And I know that the solution isn't always spending money. There's an argument to be made there, but when you look at what's in the minor league system, well, there's a reason why this this pro their whole system was ranked what 16th in Major League Baseball generously, entering the season generously. generously and that was by with baseball with Glass Mitch, now and Meadows and, and Meadows yeah. and Mitch Keller is pretty much inflates that number. Taylor Hearn as well, who's gone. So there's nothing there, okay? And the, what they need. You don't necessarily need to spend a lot of money on, in my opinion, they're still not going to spend it. Are you surprised that Jung Ho Gung finally made it back to the major leagues? You know, I, what was you that? Get, that was, you were in Cincinnati. They brought him up that's, for the... They brought him up for the final series, and in my opinion, just in, plus what you just hear, is that it's buying goodwill with a player. It's buying goodwill, and also, I, I, my first thought, actually, and I wasn't there, yeah. you were. My first thought was that they were doing it so that his first trip back to the major leagues will be in a series where almost nobody, with all due respect to your fine coverage, Lance, was paying nice. attention. <laughs> okay? I mean, he comes up, and it's you and two other reporters talking to him. He comes up for the opener in Pittsburgh, and it's just going to be this massive gaggle of everything, and it's just a different world. Exactly. And this, is, this wasn't to make a decision, because they do have to decide, okay, are we going to pick up the $5.5 .5 million option, which they're not going to do. And when I mean that they're trying to buy goodwill, they're, trying to, they're going to try to renegotiate a different contract at a much lower price tag. Always the priority. Never forget that. Cha-ching. Now the question is why would they bring back Jung Ho Gung? And it kind of goes back to what we said about the offense. They need somebody. Yeah. And they this is a guy tough. who could be cheap, who has maybe 25 home run potential if he somehow rediscovers himself. And, and they have a hole at third base despite the fact they traded for Colin Moran in yeah. the Garrett Cole trade. I guess the... Is a platoon viable? Doesn't sound like it. Why? Uh, he doesn't want to play shortstop, so you're looking no, at no, a guy. No, no, third base. No, but you're only looking at two players there. There's just no positional flexibility because him and Colin Marant only play, play they can't play anything else. So you're trying to build a roster, especially when you're the Pirates, you're looking for guys, okay, who's versatile? Who can I play at first base? So what's who the can point I play at shortstop? There wouldn't be. Position. And that's what's so bizarre about you look at the Colin Marant trade back to last year. He actually performed well the final month of the season, but. What do they do with him if Jung Ho Gung comes back? Because even Neil Huntington said that there's an everyday opportunity in Pittsburgh if Jung Ho Gung returns. Now, is that just is that saying something just to say it to hopefully bring him back? It and sounds then like figure dumping it out later? on Moran. It's if nothing dumping else. on Moran, yeah. a guy who, let's face it, was one of the centerpieces of a trade that I don't know if you've been watching the playoffs, but Garrett Cole's looked pretty good. I've heard he's he's a pretty, pretty good pitcher. Capable at his job, especially when he's not pitching. It's just confusing. The whole thing is the whole thing well, is confusing. Here's the thing though. I, I still maintain that with the pitching staff that we talked about. Yes. Now we're looking at on the diamond, this guy needs to play better. You need a third baseman who can hit. Uh, Adam Frazier at Polanco's second base. Polanco's going to come back at some point. Frazier is your second baseman, no doubt about that. He might play some right field when Polanco's out, and they might move some guys around, have somebody else play second base mm -hmm. in certain games, but yes, everyday second baseman. But Marte and Dickerson, okay, and you, you just basically have to babysit right field for a while, okay? Uh, 
in catcher, you're you're really set. You're the best so, team in Major League Baseball. In my absolutely, uh, and but why go into the season with known holes? That that's the part that gets you about this club, where you go, you you see things, we see them, everybody watching this sees them. They have to know that they need a shortstop going into the season. They have one. They have a guy here who was really happy to be here and was a capable major league shortstop. Not spectacular. But why not at least Kevin Newman. talk to Jordy Mercer and bring him back? I think at the right price they might, but I just don't see Jordy Mercer coming back. Again, though, listen to what we're talking about. We're still talking about... It's price. It always comes it's, back it's, to it's, that. But in this case, the context is nickel and diming, and they prioritize that over the stuff that you and I just wasted eight plus minutes on. Sorry, That's guys. what they think about.